Baker baggage. We've got a long segment coming up after this quick one, but I wanted in this short segment to get your take on the NSA revelations, but also federal court, the Supreme Court, gutting net neutrality rules, and the FCC is actually being the good guy here, saying, look, uh, everybody pays for their web. Uh, uh, these companies are making money hand over fist. Uh, you know, these companies are going to try to charge you to get to sites they don't want you to get to. Uh, this is going to be a great way to censor things. Uh, this is really outrageous because the very nature of the web has been designed to be open and free-flowing. And we already saw the NSA and Cyber Command try to take over the web last year, as Wired Magazine uh, reported, and basically end it. This is the Internet kill switch selectively by stealth. In fact, we should do an article uh, on that, breaking that down. Uh, but it really shows how they proposed last year, Chinese-style net censorship, net IDs to track, trace, and tax it, and ultimately gut it. I just don't see them succeeding in this now that the genie's out of the bottle. Well, it's more difficult. Certainly, you can't do it in an overt way, but I, I, would, I would say this, is that if anyone ever expects that the system's going to be free of surveillance, it, it, unless there's a total revolution in this country, the answer is going to be it's not. Um, the, the reality is all of these systems for decades um, have been targeted as, as a way uh, to control populations. Uh, the only thing that's changed is the resolution, our ability to do this at a finer and finer and finer screen. And every time they get caught, what, what happens, and you know this, they change the name of the program, they shift it to another agency, or maybe they offload it to another third country that does the workforce, you know, or some, some third party. A lot of it's then pushed down into the corporate world, which is not subject to the Freedom of Information Act. You can't get the information if you shove it down uh, deep enough into corporations. This is what's going on. When you look at it as a fragmented system, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But connecting the dots, as you say, is really the, the heart of it. Um, nobody does that. I mean, the big, the big media, the mainstream media don't have an interest in it because it's not about keeping an informed public. It's about keeping a controlled public. You know, and this is the difference between sort of the drift in the First Amendment rights uh, in the way people perceive them. And this is getting subtle. You know, people think freedom of speech is saying whatever you want, whatever you want. Well, that's a big part of it. The most important part of freedom of speech from our founding fathers was an informed public so that we could make the kind of decisions collectively to drive our democratic republic uh, in a way that was quite unique in the world. We've lost that sense of media and what's important to us. And these are the programs, Alex's and others, that at least give us a fighting chance. And fortunately, a large segment of the population still plugs in and listens. But those are the activists. All of those listening to this broadcast tend to be activist uh, populations. Do something. Do a little something. Don't just listen to the program. Send a postcard to someone. Get other people involved in what you're, what you're learning. And, and that's the way change happens. It's through first step education, once people are aware it will happen. And this is where the right and the left will come around full circle and shake hands because without a basic sense of freedom and liberty, I don't care where Exactly. You come from. And that's why they try to divide and conquer all day right. long. The truth is everybody agrees on basic freedom except for maybe one tenth of one percent. The globalists say there's only six thousand in the super class, according to Rothkop, uh, the head of the Kissinger group at the time. And I agree with that number. We're talking about maybe 6,000 people that have decided to be selfish, horrible creatures and try to create a new dark age so they can control the new age of light as they see it only for themselves. Well, someone bringing in an age of enlightenment by, by shutting off the mass of humanity, that shows fundamentally that they're the opposite of enlightened. Yeah, exactly right. And they're driven by fear, quite frankly. If you think about it, if you really listen to the messaging that's coming out, it's, it's totally fear-driven. Uh, the most hampered people tend to be the ones driving the truck. I mean... You're accused, I'm accused often of being a conspiratorial uh, thinker, but when you really look at it, military planners and planners within government are the conspiratorialists because their view is to look at the scariest thing and then build a plan to combat it. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. 
We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Final segment with Dr. Nick Begich, expert on the breakaway civilization the globalists are trying to build. They want to wall us off, give us limited technology, bring in eugenics, population reduction, a new dark age, freezing uh, the technology we get, reversing a lot of it, shutting down family farms, shutting down real sustainability for the Agenda 21 straitjacket takeover. And you now see them rushing ahead with all this because they're behind. Because they're in trouble. Uh, Zbigniew big Brzezinski and many other top globalists admit that. So this is a major, major animating contest of liberty right now. And folks have to decide, do they want to remain zombies in a trance-like state? Or do they want to become aware of the fact that, hey, those guys, Alex Jones and Nick Begich and countless others, Ron Paul, the list goes on and on, were dead on. Well, of course we were dead on. We're reading their own documents. That's what's so frustrating, and Dr. Begich, you've really been at the tip of the spear on getting government documents, the thousands of documents, the, you know, the thousands of patents and the, the admitted mind control, and, it's, and now it's all out in the open. Yeah, the Congress is pressuring uh, Hollywood to put more climate change and carbon tax messages in. They don't even hide it. Oh, illegal spying? We'll just move it to another agency. Or Congress, we're going to spy on you. We're not stopping. Right. It's so naked now, uh, Obama becoming a dictator. Uh, he, uh, it doesn't mean he'll stay in office, it just means he is dictatorially acting now. That's hiding in plain view. I mean, Alex, the president's not going to become dictatorial. Come on, stop the fear-mongering. It's all out in the open. So my concern, Dr. Begich, is this. We've reached that point where, the tipping point, where, okay, people know we're in trouble, we know it's bad, but if no one gets reversed, if no one gets in trouble... And Congress says, Obama, you decide what to do on the NSA. You decide what to do on Obamacare outside of law. You decide to do what on the borders. Then uh, we go over the edge of the cliff, and it doesn't matter if we're awake when we're falling over the edge of the cliff or asleep. So we need to really say no now to start the reversal. Being awake isn't enough. Right. I, I absolutely agree with you. And um, in fact, there was a a book written years and years ago called The Unreality Industry. It was by Mitroff and uh, Bennis, and it was about the entertainment industry and about how much of our technology would be headed into that. When you look at Zbigniew Zbid, Brzezinski's uh, book at Columbia University, Between Two Ages, predicting what would happen in a, a, a technocratic society and how it would evolve, that book was written in the early 70s, and it reads like a history. It goes through every continent, every political structure. I just read it again six months ago and literally yeah. almost vomited because I was like, my God, they're really doing it. It's everything it. he said. They did it all. And, and here's what, what, what people need to realize is I can go back to the 1970s, the early 70s, when that was being written, when my dad was in Congress, just before Watergate was breaking. Um, and, it, and, and the issue of a surveillance society was an issue then. Only the technology was nowhere near as advanced. In fact, it was in 1976 in the president's report on the CIA where it came out that they were intercepting our mail. They were infiltrating domestic uh, groups. They were getting involved in local politics and swaying it, manipulating it. They were opening people's mail. I mean, every bit of your mail, we've reported on this for decades, has been monitored. Everyone you send mail to, receive mail from, they keep track of it. All your bank data, all of your information your digital doorway, it's no longer your privacy in your home, it's your digital doorway that's so important. That's what we should individually own. No company should own our information, it's about us. We should own that information, have control of it. These are the fundamental changes to restore freedom in the country. We need changes in the law and strict criminal penalties for those that violate the law and no exemptions for government employees, no way to escape prosecution, put people in jail. That's what needs to happen to preserve American freedom. I agree. The public needs to start asking for it. Whistleblowers need to be encouraged to the right channels to get information to the public. It's too bad that so much has to be revealed. We need to get angry at people. I mean, if you caught a guy in a black suit with black sunglasses in your closet, you would probably, uh, without a warrant, blow up and kick their butt, and you should. Now, 
they're just doing it and, and and again it's a revolution of control freaks and criminals they are right. just trying to get us used to it right now and the response right. is to shout these crooks down and take the moral authority away from them that, that's exactly exactly it and and the fact is a lot of effort is spent at discrediting and and stabbing at people that are trying to bring information forward but over time history shows itself and i think that's what's been important um in, in keeping these issues alive we can't let it go and none of us can and, and and approaching it from the standpoint of an informed public becomes an empowered public the first step to change i hope it's i hope it's a peaceful revolution in the united states but i know one is coming because the average american in this country is fed up the word incumbent attached to anybody's name next election cycle is probably the kiss of death for most of them as it should be but where's the new leadership going to emerge from? It's going to emerge from all of us taking steps in a direction that's much different by recognizing our power and stepping into it. Sure. Yeah. When you look at the elite and what they've done, there was a great article, and I know you've talked about this one before. It was produced by the U.S. Army War College because the called The Mind Has No Firewalls, published now over 14 years ago. And I can tell you, nothing's changed. The human mind has no firewall. The ability to dumb down, numb down the population being done today in the advent of electronic technologies and others. But again, going back to the 70s, there were initiatives to do this using psychoactive drugs that were struck down then and then resurrected in the 1980s. And it was uh, Dr. Bregan in Maryland that began to object to that and killed the early Bush administration initiatives in that effort. But they came back again. Uh, and you look across the population now. In Kentucky, 18% of the kids are considered hyperactive or attention deficit disorder, according to reports I read in the last week. When you look at that segment of the population being diagnosed this way and then numbed down and dumbed down by our public systems, there's a problem. ADHD, uh, ADD, these All things fraud. All related to All diet-based, all based on kids watching television. The studies show that. And instead of the doctor saying, hey, don't your kid watch all this TV, give them healthy food. Oh, your kid's screwed up. Let's screw them up even more. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>